no plans, no plans at all Evil man's always transcending Fight her like sheep, swallow everything Always simple tins or pretending This is your moment of clarity from LeeCamp.net Revolution is in every day and every way, every moment and every thought, every dream and every battle fought. That's where revolution dwells. It dwells in daily change and daily action. It's the moment you decide to say no to the plastic bag that's forced on you every time you enter a store. Seriously, if you want to be called a communist, there is no better way than to say no to the plastic bag in a U.S. store. They will look at you like you have three heads and every one of them is as creepy as Rupert Murdoch underwater. As if the cashier cannot imagine a world in which you are able to carry two products home in your hands without succumbing to exhaustion and collapsing into a heap of sweat and vomit on the pavement. Traffic cops would arrive to simply put orange cones around you with, with a sign that reads, Here lies a man who tried to go without the plastic bag at the store. Don't let it happen to you. His children are now orphans. U.S. citizens use a hundred billion plastic bags per year, and each one of those takes a thousand years to degrade. And surprisingly few of those plastic bags are used to save babies by suffocating kidnappers. No, more of them end up inside whales and other creatures. And although there is a great deal of storage space inside whales, I feel like we should use it for something more meaningful, like, say, my collection of antique wooden 16th century adult diapers. Small rebellions, small revolutions. It's the moment you decide not to buy a Nestle product because Nestle destroys people. They own a majority of the world's bottled water and half the time they steal it from poor communities. It literally takes three bottles of water to make one bottle of water. I'm not kidding. But it only takes two idiots to make another baby idiot. And therein lies the heart of an unsustainable model. Nestle also uses borderline slave labor to get their cocoa beans. So I've now gotten to the point that when I see a Nestle product in the store, I immediately hear screaming children in my head. That's, that's normal, right? Although it is surprisingly effective at making it more difficult to plunk down the $2 for the candy bar. Although I have to admit, in the rare moment that I do decide to make that choice, there's something edgy about eating chocolate nougat while children scream. It's, it's, it's a more visceral experience than any regular candy event, with the possible exception of those Mentos that moan like a woman orgasming. Small revolutions will carry the day. It's the moment you move your money out of the big banks. It's the moment you vomit on the Federal Reserve. It's the moment you view a human as more than a dollar sign, and the instant you don't buy that t-shirt with the massive brand name across the front of it. Why help Nike or Adidas advertise? Why be their billboard? Each Nike logo is them pissing on their territory, pissing on you. Why would you wear that with pride, like a, like a, like a statue's face covered in pigeon poop? You should wear that like you were held down and forced into it, like some sort of sadomasochistic costume mistake where you forgot your safety word and ended up dressed like a fart bag. It's barricading an illegally foreclosed upon home. It's teaching your child to write on a test. Columbus wasn't the first to discover America. He was in fact the last to discover America. It's eating the local food and not supporting factory farming. It's planting a little seed of fact in someone's brain that one day could blossom into a full-on tantrum of truth. It's turning away from shopping for shopping's sake. It's the tool share in Toronto, the zip car in New York, the community garden in Seattle. It's looking the other way if someone breaks some stupid corporate rule designed to treat people like animals. The bathroom is for customers only. Who honestly gives a fuck? That guy doesn't have three dollars for an overpriced muffin and he badly needs to take a shit. Doesn't it sound like his life is hard enough right now? Why fight for some meaningless franchise rule designed by an asshole, invented by a dickhead, signed off on by a twat, and implemented by a troll? It's all about small revolutions. The tiny fights, punches, kicks, and bites. The million bee stings that can take down a giant, decapitate a goliath. The million termites that collapse a massive edifice. The thousands of bumps that are a raging rash. Those thousands of drops that can make a raging rapid. Each one of those moments is a statement that contagious passion matters more than ironic detachment. In fact, ironic detachment can go fuck itself in a casual, I don't even care kind of way with a funny mustache.
far funnier than mine. A thousand times a day, we're faced with tiny decisions, minuscule moments that could be battles won, baby steps toward a better civilization, molecules that make up a societal elevation, and a billion people out there regularly say to themselves, those things don't matter at all. Now just pause and think, what if all those people thought they did matter? That's been your moment of clarity from LeeCamp.net. If you feel like it, list the small acts of rebellion you do regularly, or tweet them to the hashtag small acts. And this song here at the end is made by Anarchy L. He took my words and turned them into a very interesting song called You're a Slave. I'll put a link uh, to his stuff in the description. Keep fighting. Gone and Fight, 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 fight,